So the case that we're talking about today started with a patent from 1997 that was originally challenged in the German courts. And this, the basis was that there was a directive in the European Union that basically said you can't patent inventions that deal with the commercialization of humans. Um, this was against public morality. So the German court originally decided that the patent was invalid and the uh, patent owner appealed the decision. The German federal court then referred the case to the High Court in Europe, which was the European Court of Justice, and as we now know, um, October 18th, the High Court um, agreed with the German court and said the patent is in fact invalid, and unfortunately there are no further appeals available to the patent owner. Um, the biggest key in this case, however, has to do with the interpretation of that European directive, which is called the Biotechnology Directive, and what um, the phrase, the use of human embryos for commercial purposes, means. Um, the court gave it a very broad meaning and basically said any technology that had to do with fertilization of an egg. So this, again, it goes outside of just human embryonic stem cells. This includes parthenogenesis. It includes other technologies like somatic cell nuclear transfer, SCNT. So it's quite broad. Um, the only exclusion that was carved out, which really doesn't help with embryonic stem cell technology, has to do with the fact that you can treat an embryo in utero if there's a defect or something. So that was the only carve out. Um, and as I said, there's no appeals available, but um, one process that might be available that the U.S. has also been taking is to try and redefine what an embryo is. Um, so for example, with parthenogenesis, where there's no actual fertilization with the sperm, for example, so there's no embryo per se created, um, perhaps if the definition of embryo under this European directive could be amended, that could allow for additional stem cell technologies to be patented, but it, but it won't help the embryonic stem cell technologies. So uh, under current um, law, human embryonic stem cells, parthenogenesis, um, SCNT technologies, methods of making these cells, methods of using these cells are all patentable in the United States and in many other countries, but under this decision they will not be patentable in Europe. Um, one other technology, IPS or induced pluripotent stem cells, which deals with the use of adult cells, skin, umbilical cord blood, um, we hear a lot about fat tissue, adipose tissue, um, those technologies should still be patentable in Europe, however, as research goes on, it appears there may be some limitations with the use of the adult stem cell technology. Um, so the difference in protections are obviously going to require companies and research institutes to reassess and re-examine their IP strategies, their funding strategies, and um, look at on a jurisdictional basis where they're going to do business. So in Europe, the um, institutions and companies are going to have to be careful and, and perhaps decide to keep certain technologies confidential, but keeping in mind that is in conflict with disclosure requirements if you're going to patent in the U.S., for example. So um, it's sort of a catch-22. So clearly, this decision could uh, deter companies and investors from investing in European companies and institutions for the purpose of doing research on embryonic stem cells. Um, one thing that should be clear is the decision did not say that research could not continue. It merely says you cannot patent your inventions, research or, or development um, of inventions. But as we know, the patent system is attractive to investors because they want to see a return on their investment. They want to have some protections against competition um, that, that can be protected by patents and not easily copied by others. So over time, what might happen is that research begins to be exported out of Europe in this area. Um, we're seeing so many developments in the U.S., in Asia, China and Korea 
are at the forefront of this uh, research area of technology. Um, so while the European community in life sciences has been, you know, one of the global leaders in biotech and pharma, it's, it's unclear whether they'll retain that sort of leadership in the um, regenerative medicine area. It's going to be very difficult to get investors to buy in and spend millions of dollars on technologies that um, can be copied easily because they don't have the protections that, that uh, the patents give them. And, and maybe to a certain extent the ruling gives other countries outside of Europe an opportunity to step up and take the lead in stem cell technology development and uh, research. Um, the regenerative medicine area just holds tremendous promise in medicine and healthcare. And so the research is not going to stop. I think just the jurisdictions and the countries where we see um, protections available may be the ones where we see the, the research and development in this area moving forward the most.